What's up, Kick Kick Crew? This is your boy Bobby G here. I'm ready to tell you a little bit about some knowledge that I possibly didn't have before. And that's what I'm here to do, man. Because that's what I like to do. So, let's talk about another great American distributor of the 60s, man. This is one of those you know, British Invasion beat boom guitar, you know what I mean, brands that popped up. You see them all the time the flea market, on Reverb, on eBay, everywhere, man. They're pretty cheap. You know I mean, mostly Japanese guitars, mid-60s. Brand name is called Norma, right? Now, it comes from the name of the guy that owned the distributor. The distributor is actually called Strum and Drum out of Chicago. His name was Norman Sackheim, man. So we call it Norman, Norma, Norman, Norma, 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 So that's where Norma comes from. You know what I mean? This guy, Norman Sackheim, he ran the show there, man. Strum and Drum was the name of his distributor. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff came out of uh, the Japanese Tombow Company, made most of this stuff in the early days. But he was one of the first people to foray into Korea. Korea, man. After, you know, Japan went all glitz. You know what I mean? Just like my man Westheimer. You know what I mean? He, he, I don't know who was first. I really don't know, man. Do the research, man. The guitar we're working on today is a 1970 um, you know, parlor guitar. It's a normal guitar. It's made in Korea. It's probably one of the first guitars made in Korea. So the cool thing about this is probably around about 1970, 1971. This is an example of one of the earliest you know, Korean guitars, you know what I mean, built on the, for the Western market, and also one of the last normal guitars, man, because unfortunately, around about 1972, you know, Norman Sackheim, you know, tragically died in a plane crash, I think on route to, to Moscow, I believe, I don't know, it was a strange tour to the, like, you know what I mean, that's in the height of the, you know, in Cold War too, man, you know what I mean, 72, man, it's a showdown time, man, so anyway, you know what I mean, that's the situation, man, let's flip, flip you around, man, get this guy down in the slab, you know what I mean? He's got a, a broken nut. You know what I mean? He needs his, his little fret markers, you know what I mean, replaced. You know what I mean? All easy child child stuff, man. So, a real quick one for you, man. But, you know, slightly informative. You know what I mean? We take a look at the Koreans, you know what I mean? Embryos. And we'll just be happy if we get, you know, get what you get. You don't accept. Here it is. Looking pretty as a peanut. Norman beat Westheimer. Korea. I checked the facts, man. You know what I mean? Westheimer didn't get in there until like 74, 75. You know what I'm saying? This is like, you know, in the early 70s. So Norman, you know what I mean? Sackheim. Sack behind, Sack man. With just a little TLC, we can get this guy into like, you know what I mean? Almost, you know what I mean? Mint condition. So, I'm going to uh, take this tailpiece off. You know what I mean? Remove the strings from the you know what i mean tuners and just put some tape around them and you know I mean, these are the original strings you know I mean i clean them up with i don't want to boil them and i'll just clean them up with some alcohol see that the um dots you know where there's glued on a piece of plastic you know probably white plastic they're falling off we're gonna make some new ones put them on there see the nuts crack right in half this is one of those you know what i mean 60s 70s you know what i mean nuts there's all kinds of stuff inside it reeling around it needs to be vacuumed out see how those original wraps around those you know what i mean poles there how it goes like from the top to bottom and around you know what i mean keep it from slipping around those posts keep it in tune you know what i mean that's the original setup there folks it's cool that all the stickers are still intact man you know what i mean generally these stickers disappear man that's cool man the other thing there's been some obvious repair work done this one's like paint all over the place it's even got a little bit on the back here and this is even more apparent you know what i mean it's worn off that other paint from, i guess a little bit of playing you know what i'm saying i want to sort of maybe sand that off back to a little bit more you know what i mean take a look at the you know when we repair camouflage it a little bit you know what i'm saying less of a apparent fashion so here we go man there it is people let's get the strings off let's take a better look shall we right. take this tailpiece off here looking at it again man this tailpiece still has the original protective film over it look at this it's got the plastic film still over top of it man see that see right there man you can see it even up that's crazy man that's crazy it's like 50 years man you know what i'm saying that's insane that's cool 
We're gonna try to keep that intact. I'll maybe clean it off, but I'm gonna try to keep that plastic on there. That's something else. There it is, folks. We got that tail piece, you know what I mean, taped up, put away. It's actually a pretty well built guitar, man. You know what I mean? All the components, you know, made out of wood, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's nice, sort of, you know what I'm saying? Well built early Korean guitar. You know what I mean? From the dawn, man. Let's take a look inside, man. This thing is dirty, man. Real dirty. Looks like uh, no stamps. They're all about the stickers, man. They're not about stamps or markings, but I saw a dust bunny in here. Look at that, man. Oh my god, man. This thing is like full of all kinds of miscellaneous stuff, man. You hear that? I'm gonna take it out to the garage and shop back it out, man. Clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Let's give you a little bit further provenance on this guy. I remember a little while back, I was down at swap meet early in the morning. And an old country gent had it on his table. You know what I mean? I was like, how much you want on that old timer, you know? He's like, nine you know I mean? dollars. Like, Sounds good to me, fella. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, man? It's so specific. So, you know what I mean? I paid nine bucks for it. You know what I'm saying? Man, let's get it, you know what I mean, close to mint. So let's clean it off. Let's run some lemon pledge on there, man, with a little paper towel. Scrub up that fretboard a little bit, you know what I mean? Make it nice for the people. That's what we do. That's how we do. <laughs> that, what a difference a little bit of furniture polish will do you folks. <laughs> so, what we're going to want to take care of first right off the bat, man, is this, you know what I mean? Ugly method right here, man. And this thing up here too, man. You know what I mean? So let's take a little bit of, you know what I mean? Triple zero steel whorl. You know what I mean? And just try to you know what I mean, bring this color back to correct. Just see what's under there. It's before we mess with this one. And there's a little one on the side over here. It looks like it's been see that little guy? This is the guinea pig though because this is the big one see on the flip all right so we worked all that blob off you know what i mean some steel wool with sandpaper and then i finished off the deal with some nail polish remover and uh yeah we got it all off see we got off some of the wear you know what i mean or i don't know what this is patina i suppose maybe and likewise over here we just sort of got rid of the rest of that white paint this we just gave it a quick sort of brush a little way with that man a little bit of rubbing compound we should be fine with that so what to do what to do on this man you know what i mean it's just a little tiny thing you know what i mean we could just easily you know wax it over nobody will ever say anything but you know what i mean let's give it a little bit of shade man i got some acrylic paints here we're gonna mix them up to the right thing we're gonna sort of mock this out you know what i mean and sort of you know what i mean Restore the patina. You know what I'm saying? I'll be back. You'll see what I mean. Huh. Touched up with acrylic paint. You know what I mean? You can't really see the fucked up areas that well anymore. Now we're gonna just gonna do some shellac runs. You know what I mean? Real thin runs across it. Try to cover it up. You know what I mean? I'll come back at you after we've done that. You know what I'm saying? Apply it with a foam brush. We've shellacked it. You know what I mean? A little bit of coating over it. So, what we're going to want to do now is we're want to get in here. Now, this isn't the right way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Not the right way at all to do that. You know what I mean? You should have taken that old repair out completely. You know what I mean? Plugged it with some wood and all that kind of stuff and totally refinished it. Whatever. You know what I mean? It's held up for, what, 40 years, 50 years. So, we're just going to touch up these black areas here. You know what I mean? That have been sort of affected by you know trying to clean up that mess 50 years ago and right now you know what i mean so we're going to just do that with the, you know what i mean acrylic paint now that this is dried you know it's black acrylic paint and we'll come back to you after that's dried you know what i mean and in turn we're just going to shellac over that now listen like i said it's a nine dollar guitar so we're doing it like you know what i mean the bobby g hillbilly way you know what i'm saying i like that shellac runs though man french polish my people Hey. That black acrylic's dried up, man. Looks great. So we're just going to do a nice shellac run on top of that. You know what I'm saying? See you when that's complete.
So I let it set like two or three days. You know what I mean? It's nice and shiny. I'm going to go ahead and give it like a quick run over with a, a little bit of light gauge steel wool. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, people? You can barely see that. You know what I mean? Any of that shit. Right. So I'll come back to you once it's all dulled up. There it is. Just work it down to a dull haze. Get rid of all the funky stuff. Shellax real easy to sort of, you know what I mean? Get rid of the funky stuff, but it's also real easy to go through, man. You know, rubbing alcohol, take it right off completely. And then here's the other one, man. So let's uh, do a fret job on this guy, man. You know what I mean? We'll stay away from the zero fret because we don't want to bring him down anywhere. We want him to stay high, high and mighty. Let's do that full fret job. You know what I mean? Watch my, you know, all my other many videos about that. You know what I mean? Magic marker. Blah, blah, blah. Fret crowning tool. Peace. All right, so we got the frets down nice. You know what I mean? They were really pitted. You know what I'm saying? You can see a little bit of evidence of that. You know what I mean? Up here in these topper frets. But they're all even. Recrowned. So, you know what I mean? We'll be able to play without any buzzes, hopefully. So, you know what I mean? I didn't put any um, mineral oil on it. I just sort of scrubbed it up with some steel wool and rinsed it off a little, a little bit of, you know, a wet rag. Uh, the reason being is we still have to do those fret markers and they're not going to stick to, you know, mineral oil. So, let's do those fret markers. Now, what you're going to want to do is just find a piece of old packaging plastic. I mean, this is, you can get it from anything. You know, everything's got some package over it. You know what I mean? This is a piece of plastic. This is a nail polish. Now, I don't know if you can buy this in the state. I'm not, you know, too sure about nail polish. My daughter actually picked this up in Ecuador. It's made in Colombia. Um, it's like a, it's like a perloid kind of color. It looks kind of like perloid. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that to the back of this and let it dry. And I'll be right back at you. You know what I'm saying, man? We're going to make this nice and easy for the people. All right. So now it's dry. Uh, it's not opaque, but you can see, at least in person anyway, that it's got like a little pearlescence to it. Cool. So we're going to opaque it up now. Just give it an old coating of a regular old white lacquer lacquer and just let that dry out here maybe two nice coats <laughs> not too thick though all right so now it's dry it's got like a little kind of a pearlescence on there you can't really see on the phone yeah i mean but it does <laughs> on this side so i got some old hole punches just gotta punch a whole bunch of them and i'll take the four best ones and i'll glue them onto the guitar so i'll see you then <laughs> Now we got our four finest dots picked out. We're gonna go over here. We'll just glue them on where we see the old glue. You know, I took a little scraper and scraped a little bit off, but I left some on to sort of have the other glue stick to it. I'm just gonna use regular old type bond. I'm not gonna use crazy glue it's because crazy glue isn't you know too forgiving if you fuck up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna glue them on, and I'll see you later. Make sure that you glue them on, paint side down, shiny side up. If you ever do this, folks. Nice and pretty, and they actually do have a nice perloid look, man. You know what I mean? Too bad the camera doesn't really, you know what I'm saying, man? It's time to get an Apple phone, man. So we're going to let that dry for a while, man. So what are we to do about this nut, man? We saw it was all cracked off before. Here are all the pieces that remain of it, you know what I mean? I couldn't even glue it. You don't ever want to glue a nut, because, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, I mean, a waste of time. So I got a nut here, old stock from the 60s. It's a little tiny bit, you know what I mean? Maybe not as high. But that's okay, because it'll force it over the zero nut. This is a pre, you know, slotted, but it's not too deeply slotted. So I'm going to give it, even though it's as old as hell, I'm going to give it a little bit of age. Sand it down a little bit, man, mat it out. And, you know, do the slots. You know, because if you look here, the slots are pretty much the same. Ugh. So let's mat this guy out, man. It is, folks. So we got it all matted out, man. Took a whole bunch of these different, you know, rat tail files and, you know, maybe we filed it down a little bit, you know, correctly, you know what I'm saying? Then we took a little bit of, you know, fine grade sandpaper, fine grade steel wool, and just totally matted it out. So let's yellow it up. Got some acrylic paint, man. We're just going to take a little piece of magic eraser, man, and we're just going to, you know what I mean? yellow this guy up smear it all in with that and then we're going to take this fella here and you know what i mean 
That's like a quarter ass rag, man. Paper towel, man. Alright, so I'll see you when it's all yeller. You yeller bellies. Folks, I took the liberty of putting a little bit of graphite in there, man. Really giving it some age, man. It looks old as fuck, man. So let's glue it on while we're waiting for this to finish its drying process right here. You know, glue it on, man. Get a little clamping action. I'll see you on the morrow when it's all dry from all sides, folks. <laughs> Yo, folks, good morning. Looks like it's time we can take this little guy off here. Easy, easy does it, man. Looks centered enough, right? Pretty good, pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to take a little tiny bit of sandpaper. You know what I mean? And just sort of go over the edges of this. You know what I'm saying? They're slightly, you know what I mean, raised up. A little bit proud from the, 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 the fretboard. That's not a big deal. But we want to make that a little bit less, you know what I'm saying, noticeable. So let's lightly take some very fine sandpaper and some steel wool. Get these guys down a little bit, man. Fix the edges up, focals. See you in a minute. I got the edges off of those dots. We gave it some nice mineral oil. Put some butcher's wax on it. Now, a lot of these fretboards... You know what I mean? Or just maple fretboards that have been, you know what I'm saying, stained. And this one is no different. So be real, real careful. You know what I mean? When you're sanding these or sanding anything near this. I mean, usual, you can sand rosewood. You know what I mean? Because, of, you know what I mean? be rosewood underneath it. But it's maple underneath it. And it's very, very hard to fix bald spots on these guys. And that's coming from many, many years of experience, folks. So what I'm going to want to do is just take a black furniture marker and just go over this. I'm not going to mess around with the wear on the back of it, just on the front here. I just want to, you know what I mean, get rid of this stuff. It's a black furniture marker, folks. Come back when that's done. That looks nice, right? Nothing too crazy, you know what I'm saying? Just enough to sort of make it look nice for the people, because that's what we do. So let's give this guy a nice coat of mom's carnauba wax, man. Some cleaner wax. Get it all waxy and smacksy, man. Hey! End up in sheeny and shiny. Looks good. We're going to put the bridge and the tailpiece back on. We got the tailpiece cleaned up a little bit. Still got that protective film hanging on by a thread. <laughs> Looks good, though, man. If we took that off, it'd be like, like you know what I mean? Gem, gem, mint. Took some rubbing alcohol and the string got pretty clean, too, man. These are the original strings, folks. Let's assemble this guy. Get some glam shots. How's that sound to y'all? Good. Not good. I don't really give a fuck. Peace! Here it is, folks. Final legacy from our friend Norman Sackheim. You know what I'm saying? One of the first production Korean guitars, man. You know what I'm saying? First and last. You know what I'm saying? So we've proven that our friend Sackheim opened up Korea before Westheimer, man. We proved it. You know what I mean? He died in 72. This guitar is, you know what I mean, definitely from Korea. Definitely before he died, right? Look at that, man. You can barely see any of that damage that was on there. Now, this thing's not in gem mint condition. You know what I'm saying? It's obviously been around the block a little bit, this guitar, right? It's a little tiny bit of scratches from the belt buckle. You know what I'm saying? But nothing like offensive, man. Nothing, you know what I mean? If you had owned this guitar when you were a kid, it was your first guitar, and it was stolen by like a, you know, band of bandits, thieves, mugged you. you. Took your little Norma guitar in 1972. And you found this one. You'd be like, oh my God, look at that. It's in great original condition. You know what I'm saying? All the stickers are still intact, man. I know it's got a steel reinforced neck. <laughs> it's great though, man. You know what I mean? And it sounds good too. It really does. It intonates perfectly, you know what I mean? Just a great, great, great little parlor guitar, man, for nine bucks, you know what I'm saying? Just great, man. Just great. Looks good, looks good. So let's hear this, let's hear this old gal. Let's tickle on her. See if she laughs. <laughs> there it is, folks. One of the final normal guitars, early 70s. One of the first Korean guitars produced for the Western market. Two and one on this beautiful instrument. Nice little parlor guitar. All stickers intact. 
Film still on the chrome. Action's good. Original strings. Don't get better than that, people. Don't get better than that. Rain, please listen now. Does that seem fair? For her to steal my heart when she doesn't care. I never love another cause my heart's been so far away. The only girl I care about has gone. For a brand new start well, Little does she know now when she left that day Lord, she took my heart John Gummo, wash your hands, brother. I love you, man. Peace be with you. The Norma FG7, Norman Sackheim. Rest in peace, my brother. God bless, man. It's getting better every day, man. Every single day. Peace.